Good morning. Yes, so we start with another topic today. All right. So the lecture today is about uh, learning learning about the upper and lower motor neuron lesions. Okay. And by now, I think you're all aware of what is an upper motor neuron, what is a lower motor neuron, isn't it? But then we can remind ourselves that the you know neurons originating from the cortex, all right, from the primary cortex, and of course. Uh, in the soft cortical structures as we have seen yesterday when we were discussing the extra pyramidal you know tracts those neurons that terminate in the spinal cord they are called as the upper motor neuron okay then uh, neurons originating from the anterior horn of the spinal cord ending in the effector or the muscle all right that will be the lower motor neuron okay so lesion can be anywhere it is upper motor neuron can be anywhere from here all right and along the track along the pathway and till the spine. The same with the lower motor neuron, it can be anywhere from its origin and even to the effector. All right, anywhere it can be called a lesion, anywhere here it can be called as a lower motor neuron lesion. Okay, so lower motor neuron lesion can be a lesion anywhere. It can be here in the anterior horn cell. It can be along the, you know, course of the lower motor neuron tracts or it can be at the neuromuscular junction. Understand? So it can be anywhere. So so a lesion in the upper motor neuron is called as the upper motor neuron lesion. A lesion in the lower motor neuron is called as the lower motor neuron lesion. Okay. So what are the you know features of these lesions? All right. So you can see here there is you know the features and you know it's given the differences as well in the slide. As I've said earlier, site of lesion for an upper motor neuron can be anywhere. It can be in the cerebral, uh, cerebral hemisphere or anywhere, uh, you know, along the, in the, you know, uh, brain circuit, you no, know, uh, relating to motor control. It can be cerebellum, it can be basal ganglia, it can be brain stem, it can be spine cord, okay. And lower motor neuron can be anywhere starting from the anterior horn cell, the nerve roots, the peripheral nerves, the neuromuscular junctions, muscle, okay. That will uh, uh, be considered as the low motor neuron lesion. And uh, in uh, upper motor neuron lesion, we generally see muscle weakness in the form of the quadriplegia involving all the you know limbs, four limbs, a hemiplegia or it may be diplegia, maybe paraplegia. But in the case of low motor neuron, it is uh, either um, just a you know myopathy, weakness, or a neuropathy that involves a nerve only. All right. So it can be proximal, if it is proximal, it's myopathy, if it's distal, it will result in neuropathy. Then the tone of the muscle, all right, the tone of the muscle, uh, in the case of upper motor neuron lesion, because you know actually it's the upper motor neuron that uh, generally control the lower motor neuron, okay, so when the, the resolution in the upper motor neuron is just like a kind of, a, you know, a release uh, phenomenon for the lower motor neuron, and so, what you see is generally some form of, you know, increased tone, ex you know, excessively increased tone resulting in spasticity or rigidity. We'll come back to this, the difference between past, uh, what is spasticity and what is rigidity, okay? Then in the case of low motor neuron, you will generally see hypotonia. And if there's paralysis here, it is generally, you know, a facet type of paralysis. So in case of upper motor neuron lesion, it's spastic type of paralysis. And in case of low motor neuron lesion, it is a flaccid type of paralysis because a flaccid because there is hypotonia. Okay, and uh, you will see some fasciculation in case of fasciculation fibrillation. If you do a you know an EMG, all right, you may see all these uh, you know contraction of uh, some uh, of some fibers, all right, of fibrillation in case of low motor neuron lesions. Okay. So, fasciculation of the tongue is, uh, you know, very common in case of low motor neuron. And uh, tendon reflexes. What about the reflexes? We have two types of reflexes. You have the deep reflexes and the superficial reflexes. And as you know that, you know, superficial reflexes uh, mostly involve the upper motor neuron as well. So, in case of, uh, you know, superficial reflexes, you will find that in some books it is written as absent. Okay, but in some books, of, uh, I think uh, somewhere else it will be written as, you know, 
there uh, there will be hyperflexia. But uh, we have to correct this. It is actually hyperflexia in case of deep reflexes and absent of, uh, you know, reflexes in case of superficial reflexes. Okay. So that is the picture or the feature in case of apomotor neuron lesions with uh, regards to the, you know, tendon reflexes. But in lower motor neuron lesion, because as you know, the lower motor neuron, which uh, is part of the spinal, uh, you know, reflex arc, that is, uh, so we have a lesion there, I mean, there's a break, there is a breach. And so, what is uh, the result? The result would be hyporeflexia or irreflexia. A total loss, actually, there will be a total loss of reflexes. And uh, it will be both the superficial as well as the uh, deep reflexes. Okay. And uh, when you look at the abdominal reflexes, you find that they are absent in case of, so these are part of the, you know, uh, reflexes we can say. Uh, they will be absent in case of upper motor neuron lesion, they will be present in the case of low, low motor neuron lesion. Sensory loss, you will find some, you know, cortical sensations at the loss. And um, in case of uh, more low motor neuron, will be the peripheral sensations are lost. So I'm not going to electromyography because that would not be in your scope. So, but I mentioned something about it. But again, we can uh, have a look at this. Uh, you know, the differences in the given in other you know, in other text. Okay. So here everything is the same as you can see here. But one uh, some extra things have been given. Upper motor neuron lesions, these are conditions occurs in, that can occur in vascular accidents or space occupying lesions. That means a hemorrhage, we can say, in the brain, all right, that results in space or, you know, uh, formation of a space occupying lesion. Or it may be a mass, all right, a tumor uh, for that matter, that uh, form a kind of a space occupying lesion and that uh, causes compression of the tracts and so resulting in upper motor neuron lesions, okay. So it can be this, it can occur anywhere along the pathway of the upper motor neuron. And in case of uh, low motor neuron, it's a condition uh, given as, uh, you know, example here is polymyelitis. So it can be infection, all right, that, is, that affects the low motor neuron, okay. And um, it can be other things as well, okay. So the reason can be many, okay. Uh, but uh, you would to find that uh, in case of upper motor, upper motor neuron lesion, then you know the muscles are affected in groups. Okay, they are affected in groups. But here, in case of low motor neuron lesion, it is going to be a little bit more localized, or uh, you know, uh, generally single muscles are affected. Okay, and uh, tone is increased as we've already seen in the early slide. Tone is lost. Power, no loss of power. But in case of low motor neuron lesion, there will be loss of power. Reflexes, as given in the early site, also here it's the same. It is given that both, uh, you know, superficial and deep reflexes are exaggerated. Okay, but you would, as I've said earlier, uh, you would find in the, some of your textbook that, you know, superficial reflexes are actually absent. And it's the deep reflexes that are exaggerated. Okay, reflexes... In case of uh, low motor neuron lesion is that uh, both will be lost and we would see Babinski sign positive in upper motor neuron lesion and Babinski sign negative in case of low motor neuron lesion. Okay, you would see clonus in case of upper motor neuron lesion but you would not see this type of thing, what it calls clonus in case of low motor neuron lesion. As I said earlier, paralysis would be, uh, you know, spastic in nature. In case of low upper motor neuron lesion and uh, in case of low motor neuron it will be flaccid type of paralysis. And you will see what is called as a class knife reflex, alright, this is a class knife rigidity which is present in the upper motor neuron lesion. But you don't see that in case of low motor neuron lesion, okay. So these are a few things that you must remember, uh, you know, in regards to uh, the differences between these two types of uh, lesions, okay. Other things can be, you know, wasting, which may be, you know, which, which is not present in case of, um, you know, upper motor neuron lesion, but wasting may be present in, you know, low motor neuron lesion, okay. 
And uh, yes, there's uh, differences between uh, the spasticity and rigidity. So spasticity can be as a result of um, you know pyramidal tract lesions and uh, commonest would be the internal capsule. So if there was a lesion in the internal capsule. It can be a space occupying lesion, all right, uh, in the internal capsule that causes compression of the tract, resulting in you know uh, upper motor neuron lesion with uh, resulting in a spastic type of paralysis. Or if it, uh, you know, region occurs in the basal ganglia, as I have said earlier, then uh, it would, uh, you know, involve the extrapyramidal, uh, you know, tracts, and then, you know, this would result into rigidity. And in spasticity, there is only one group of muscle that will be involved. It will be either an agonist or it will be an antagonist. Or we can say either a flexor or an extensor. Okay. But in case of rigidity, you will find that both the muscles are involved, both the you know, types of muscles are involved, both agonists and intercourse, both flexors and extensors will be involved. And spasticity, you would see a type of you know, rigidity, which is called as type of, uh, I mean, hypertonia, which is called as clasp knife. Clasp knife rigidity. No, it's spasticity, it's spasticity, it's spasticity, but then, you know, this type of hypertonia here, is uh, referred to as a class knife rigidity. Okay, in the case of uh, you know rigidity, it will be hypotonia of a left pipe type or a cochlear type. I will show you, you know, uh, probably the class knife type. I will show you and then uh, describe how a left pipe and cochlear type, you know, would look like. Anyway, in case of uh, spasticity, you know, rigidity is uh, which is stretch sensitive. All right, so when you stretch. There will be increased rigidity, but in case of uh, you know rigidity is not stretch sensitive. Okay, so it's uh, irrespective of stretch, there would be rigidity. Anyway, where is it? So this is what we call as the clasp knife, you know, rigidity. So this is a clasp knife. I think you are all aware of this type of knife. You, I think you probably some of you have it or must have seen it, isn't it? We must have all seen it. It's a pocket knife. Okay. So this is known as a clasp knife. You cannot open it easily or close it easily. Okay. It, uh, it breaks in between. You know, when you open or when you, not that the knife breaks, but the, you know, the process of uh, closing it or opening it, you know, it is not smooth. Okay. So initially it would be, initially it would be offering some resistance, then it give way. All right. So it's the same when you close or you open it. So when you close it also initially, be, when you want to close this knife after you've opened it, when you, you know, initially when you start closing it, it will offer some kind of, you know, resistance. But then the halfway it will give, you know, give in. So uh, suddenly it, 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 it closes by itself. So it, uh, it has to be closed with a lot of uh, caution, you know, this type of uh, knife. Otherwise it can cause... Uh, you know, injury to person who's handling it. So we see this kind of you know phenomenon in uh, what we call as a class knife rigidity. Okay. So here, what does it say? Initial resistance to a rapid stretch, then suddenly collapses as a result uh, as a result of excitation of tendon organs. That means the Golgi tendon organs. Here we're talking about the Golgi tendon organs. So. It uh, results in the excitation of Golgi tendon organs, and you know we have already you know described about the you know the reflexes involving uh, Golgi tendon organ, which is called the inverse stretch reflex. So what what is the outcome of that? The outcome of that is relaxation. So what is happening here is that initially you you know there is uh, you know resistance, but then the, as you, you go on you know go on um, pushing it. What happens? Uh, there will be excitation of the, there will be tension that is developed in the muscle and the tendon, and there will be, you know, uh, stimulation of the Golgi tendon organs. And uh, when you stimulate the Golgi tendon organs, it will result in inhibition of the alpha motor neurons, and that will result in the relaxation. So a sudden relaxation would occur that uh, you know will give way, right? Suddenly give way. Okay, so as you can see here, the forearm is being extended. This causes stretching of the biceps, brachii, which then suddenly relaxes. So you're you're trying to extend it. Initially, there will be some kind of resistance, 
But then uh, when you reach somewhere halfway, you know, it suddenly gives way. I mean, it suddenly relaxes and uh, it is uh, extended. Okay. So, this is what we call as the class life rigidity, which is seen in actually upper motor neuron where you get a spastic type of paralysis. And uh, with relation to Wabinski sign, so this is uh, what is happening actually. So upper motor neuron lesion, you would see uh, what we say as a Babinski, Babinski sign positive. This type of sign is actually seen in, you know, normally seen in infants where, you know, the upper motor neuron lesion, I mean the upper motor neuron that uh, mostly the, you know, corticospinal tract, all right, is uh, underdeveloped, we say, okay, underdeveloped. And so you see, you know, uh, a response of this nature, which is called as Babinski sign positive. Okay, so what is happening here is that even in upper motor neuron lesion, you see the same kind of phenomenon, right? When you stroke the lateral side of the sole, all right, the lateral side of the sole, starting from the this part, okay, and you come like this, you know, stroke it with something that is sharp and then the you have this kind of, uh, you know, you have this kind of um, arrangement in your uh, knee hammer, all right? So it is there in your knee hammer. So you can use that when you open the, I mean, if you, you know, the knee hammer has two parts. One is the part with the hammer-like thing and the other end contains, a, you know, a sharp end. Or it may, you know, you may have to open the, you know, it's the sharp end is present within the, shaft of the hammer so you may have to you know open it unscrew it and then you'll find this uh, kind of uh, arrangement there and so you have a sharp end uh, you know uh, part of the knee hammer and that will be used for this uh, eliciting this uh, reflex okay what we call the Babel scale reflex okay so what you do is you start from here and then go on the lateral side and then come towards the then you come to the small toe and then uh, suddenly towards the uh, big toe. Okay, so this is the direction. And what is the response? This is the response that you get. Extension, all right, and uh, and fanning. This is the fanning of the toes, all right, which is unlike here, all right. Here you find that there is flexion of these toes. Here you find there is extension of the toes and fanning, all right, or what you call abduction. And here is just the opposite. Toes are down, so there is flexion here. Okay. And uh, this is said to be a normal plantar response. Normal because, uh, you know, it's just seen in adults, normally in adults, okay. And it's a normal thing. So, low motor neuron lesion is actually this is, you know, this uh, sign is generally an indication of the integrity of the upper motor neuron, okay. There's not, it has nothing to do with old motor neuron. So therefore, even in this, you know, in, in this lesion, you'd find a normal Babinski, which is a normal plantar response, we say. Okay. So, but then we call this a Babinski negative. This is said to be a Babinski positive. Okay. So in upper motor neuron lesion, you get Babinski positive. In lower motor neuron lesion, you get Babinski positive. Okay. Sorry, negative. Babinski negative here. And... Uh, so that is with respect to Babinski. So anyway, as I said, motor neuron lesions, be it upper motor neuron or low motor neuron, can occur anywhere in their, you know, pathways. Okay. So you can see here, in the case of, um, you know, paralysis of the face, it may involve the, you know, uh, the corticospinal as well as the uh, as well as a corticobulbar, we say, or it may be a, what we say as a cranial nerve involvement. Okay, so here in case it is an upper motor neuron lesion involving an upper motor neuron, you would see paralysis of the lower face, all right, on the opposite contralateral. Generally, if it is, uh, you know, it is anyway, it's, anyway, it's contralateral only. Okay, it has to be contralateral only because they cross. You know, it's crossing in the medulla, okay. So it's contralateral, okay. And here, no motor neuron lesion, it's just uh, the opposite, all right. 
will be ipsilateral but then paralysis will be of the entire face you see entire face will be involved okay the features would be uh, you know the things that we have already seen earlier okay but this is just to tell you that uh, you know by looking at these uh, outcome or what we call the, it may be a paralysis all right the signs all right of a lesion we can uh, we can you know we can come to conclusion whether the lesion is upper uh, upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor neuron lesion okay so that is also seen here in case of bell's palsy all right it is a low motor neuron lesion affecting contralateral side and forehead is not affected it is spared we say no forehead sorry this is the low motor neuron so it involves uh, the same side and um, and it involves the entire face so no forehead sparing here but in this case you know the lesion is somewhere here and this is the upper motor neuron isn't it there here in bell's palsy the lesion is somewhere here which is away from the anterior horn cell all right so this is low motor neuron that uh, you know involves the entire face one side of course on the same side of the lesion and here it is on the opposite side of the lesion why because it involves the upper motor neuron as you know upper motor neurons they crossed isn't it they cross so they cross so therefore the lesion is contralateral or even we may say the the features are contralateral okay so they cross like this come like this and then supply this part but then here we you know the low motor neuron originating from this side is supplying this side of the face and so if there is a lesion here it will be involving that the same side the ipsilateral side okay in this case is contralateral fine so that explains the earlier slide okay so other things may be present here forehead and lip, lip uh, that are you know similar lip something called as a drooping of the lip you see in both the cases okay in both the cases you may not see but then you do not see the forehead being affected in the case of upper motor neuron lesion which is seen in stroke all right in case of stroke so anyway these are all features of the you know uh, involvement of the facial uh, facial nerve or the cortical nuclear tract okay resulting in those features that we have already seen earlier okay so what uh, by showing this what i mean to say is that you know uh, knowing the features and uh, of uh, lesions in the upper motor neuron and lesions in the lower motor neuron we can you know we can help uh, i mean we can um, it can help us in locating the uh, area of lesion okay where uh, the lesion is whether it is in the upper motor neuron or whether it is in the lower motor neuron okay for example uh, quadriplegia also may present with uh, you know both features the lower uh, you know the lower you may find uh, if the lesion is present somewhere in the between the cervical and thoracic you know spine then uh, you'll find that the lower the lower limb would be presenting a lower motor neuron sorry um, an upper motor neuron lesion uh, features but then the upper limb both the hands would be presenting a a lower motor neuron type of lesion okay so again uh, you know you see that kind of uh, characteristic you know or that kind of uh, paralysis all right then uh, you can come to the conclusion with respect to the level of the lesion so here as i've said it'll be somewhere in the say c8 and t1 okay we find um, that there is um, quadriplegia and then uh, upper limb is showing low motor neuron lesion uh, you know characteristics and uh, lower limbs are showing uh, upper motor neuron lesion characteristics okay so depending on the involvement for this example if it, you know it involves the internal capsule all right it may it may involve the it may involve the coracospinal tract and the corticobulbar tract so one cranial nerve and cranial nerve uh, lesion the, the, the compression of the cranial nerve may result in 
upper motor neuron, the, you know, type of lesion. And uh, in the case of uh, corticospinal tract, it may show it may show a different type of feature. Okay, sorry, uh, compression of the corticobulbar cranial nerve may show low motor neuron lesion, but then compression of the you know uh, corticospinal would uh, be showing upper motor neuron lesion. Okay, so that also you know gives us some idea about uh, where the lesion is. If it is uh, you know affecting only a very small, say a very small area in the body or a small part of the limb, then we may think of, um, you know, lesion somewhere higher, say maybe lesion in the precentral virus, lesion in somewhere in the motor cortex, all right? So it may involve only that, you say we may, it may be involving only the tongue or maybe involving only the, you know, uh, one portion of the limb, all right? So that that uh, shows that the lesion is somewhere higher, okay? Somewhere in the precentral gyrus or somewhere in the motor cortex, okay? So, so, I'll, therefore, a characteristic of lesions, you know, uh, gives, us a, gives us an idea where is the uh, lesion present, all right? Along the pathway, the descending pathway, okay? So we'll be, you know, discussing more and more about these uh, lesions and uh, be talking about um, uh, lesions affecting the spine as well. So, but uh, it's good to have an idea about uh, what uh, is motor, upper motor neuron lesion, what is low motor neuron lesion. Okay. And what are the features of uh, upper motor neuron lesion and what are the features of the low motor neuron. So you, you, you have seen that the features are very distinct. Okay, very distinct. You may not look at uh, reflexes, but then you may just look at the, you know, type of paralysis. Or may, you may just look at, um, you know, the tone. Or you may just look at the power. Or you may just look at the, you know, the bulk of the muscle. Whether there is wasting or no wasting. Then you can come to, you know, conclusion without even doing the reflexes. You can come to the conclusion of whether, you know, the lesion is uh, upper motor neuron lesion or whether it is low motor neuron lesion. Am I clear? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You may have to read, okay? Uh, you may have to read to, you know, further, you know, expand your, you know, knowledge about this and your understanding as well. Okay? It may take some time for you to understand. Okay? But I guess you have some kind of, you know, fair idea about what is uh, a lesion in the upper motor neuron, what is a lesion in the lower motor neuron. Isn't it? You must have a fair, I mean, you must have, you know, you know, the correct idea of what is, you must know what is an upper motor neuron is and what a low motor neuron is. And this I've been, you know, uh, I've been uh, mentioning about this again and again. Isn't it? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I want you to do something. Okay. I want you to write an assignment on... Um, we had uh, done the sensory tracks, but then I want you, you to write an assignment on the differences between the ascending tracks and the descending tracks. All right, clear. The ascending tracks, descending tracks. You must uh, tell me the origin, the course, and everything has to be written in one page. Okay, and the you know the types of um, uh, types of uh, the uh, I mean the the different types of uh, ascending tracks, the different types of um, as ascending tracks, understand? And their functions, functions of each, you know, of each type of track. Clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. All right. So this would be your assignment. All right. Like I have done in the case of uh, sensory tracks. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye. Any, any question? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. All right. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. Thank you.